This is going to be a really great episode today. I sat down with my friend Anthony Renna and recorded an, an episode for the Strength Coach podcast. And for those of you that don't know, I am uh, I have a segment on the Strength Coach podcast. It's like a five minute segment um, called business secrets for gym owners. And so every twice a month, I do like a little five minute segment. Well, the good news is, is that I now have my own show in conjunction at, on the strength coach podcast with Anthony. So every month, Anthony, I, Anthony and I are going to sit down and unpack a, a, a business lesson and it's going to be run through the strength coach podcast, which I'm honored and really excited about. Uh, because it's just, you know, Coach Boyle's on that show all the time and it's just, he's been such a big mentor to me and everything. So, um, th- what you're about to hear is my first episode with Anthony as it's, uh, has been aired on the Strength Coach podcast. So, uh, take, take a listen to this. I unpack, um, some, f- some five things that are going to be working this year in marketing. But me and Anthony uh, go and we, we go deep into some marketing lessons. And I think that you'll really enjoy this podcast. All right. Talk to you guys soon. Peace. All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome to a special episode of the Trent Coach Podcast. Today, we're going to talk to Vince Gabriel. If you know, if you've been listening to the show, you know Vince does the Business Secrets for Gym Owners show uh, segment. And uh, where he basically is talking about all kinds of things, mostly marketing to help you grow your business. And uh, what I really wanted to, you know, we talked, Vince and I talked about it earlier, like last year, you know, at the end of the year, about just kind of coming up with some more, some, some ways to kind of connect people. We, we think it's so important that, you know, it doesn't matter if you even own a gym anyway. These are all uh tested marketing concepts that Vince has used in his own gym. So he's not just a, uh, a consultant for gym owners. He's also owned his own gym for a long time. So uh, Vince, actually, let's, let's get you to kind of go back a little bit. Just give your, your kind of career story so people understand where you're coming from. You're not somebody who is, um, uh, you know, just kind of coming from a business background and, and talking to gym owners, but you're somebody that, you know, grew up in the fitness business uh, um, and, and really, uh, you know, you're still doing it too. So you've been there. Uh, you know, you've been there and you're still doing it, which which is always what I love for business coaches when they're still in it. They still got the gym because shit happens, man. Things change all the time. So let's hear your story of like how you got here. Well, th- this could then be a Joe Rogan type podcast where <laughs> we go three and a half hours because it's a long story, but um, I'll, I'll make it as short as I possibly can. Um, I. I got into the fitness industry when I was in sixth grade and I was a 150 pound sixth grader. And to give you context, um, the eighth grade weight limit to play football was 140 pounds. So the eighth graders needed to be under 140 pounds to be able to play football. I was a sixth grader that was 150 pounds. So I had to lose 10 to 15 pounds just to be able to play on the eighth grade team as a sixth grader. And so I was essentially a fat kid. And that was my first experience to working out. And I had to go. And my mom was just like trying to help me lose weight. And she had no idea how to lose weight. She was like, you know, go run around the block once. And like, (laughs) like telling me to take these, like special pills and like you're eating (laughs) Jenny Craig food. And like, you know, like it was just like such an old school, like stupid way of doing it. But that was like my first experience. And I was the worst football player on the team. Actually, my nickname, Anthony was bounce back Vinny. And I got the nickname bounce back Vinny because (laughs) I went to hit the sled. You know, this I know you're a hockey guy, but in football, they have these big sleds and you go and you hit the sled and I hit the sled and I bounced back so hard that I actually ended up doing a flip. And so my nickname for the rest of the football season was Bounce Back Mini. And it was terrible. It was an awful uh, period of my life. And I ended up actually um, continuing to play football. And I got a scholarship to Temple University and played there and had a very injury play career. And I was a very average offensive lineman. 
Um, and, but you know, what, what most average offensive linemen are bad on the field and good in the weight room. And I was good in the weight room and bad on the field. And I just kind of created this love for fitness and health. And my senior year at Temple, um, I was playing against Rutgers and I broke my leg and I just kind of took everything out of me. And so I was like, I'm done. So I, so I didn't, I forgo my last year of football and I was like, I want to move to San Diego and become a personal trainer. And um, mind you this, um, I come from a long line of families, uh, family business people, right? My dad was, and was a, you know, successful in, uh, 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 money, money manager. All my sisters are in the financial world and I was like a black sheep. So I told my dad, I was like, dad, I'm moving out to California. I'm going to be a personal trainer. And I could just see the look on his face. I was like, what is this kid? thinking like being a personal trainer but hey i was um really committed i loved i wanted to do it and you know i wanted to uh prove everybody that you know i could make it in an in industry um that you know people don't usually last very long as we both know well, why um, san diego so though what, what made you go to san diego and being from jersey and you know like what, yeah. what uh, just the weather so no i went when i was a sophomore in high school I went to um, a mission trip with my church and we went and built houses in Mexico and I think it was Tijuana, but um, we stayed in San Diego the night before we drove to Tijuana to build these houses. And I will say it was one of the coolest experiences of my life to, to do that. But we got to Pacific beach, San Diego, and I was a sophomore in high school and I was looking around and I was looking at the weather and I was looking at just like how cool this place was. And I was like, I am moving. I vowed that day. I was like, I am moving to San Diego at some point in my life. Hey, listen. I made a pact with myself. Also, come on. You didn't mention the women because we know. Don't worry. Van yeah. Vanessa's not going to listen to this. <laughs> she won't listen to this. So, yes, that was a factor as well. Of course, I was a sophomore in high school. Right. <laughs> so, but it was awesome. It was like, I, I it was like, I, it was like a moment. There's like a few moments like that where just like you, um, I, I had a moment like that um, when I had, I had two girls right now. And when Vanessa was pregnant with our third, um, I really wanted it to be a boy. And I was hoping that the statistics of your third kid being a boy are very, very low. It was like a 20% chance of being a boy, but I was up really late one night and all of a sudden, like, God spoke to me and I was just like, he's like, you're having a boy. And it was like this moment of like a hundred percent certainty in my life that it couldn't have been more uncertain, but it was, I was a hundred. And I, that's kind of how I felt. I was like, I'm moving to San Diego. I'm doing this at some point in my life, no matter what. And that was like a perfect time. I was 22, 23 years old. And shoot, I just, you know, took the lead, went up to San Diego and I went on my first and last job interview <laughs> in 2003 um, nice. and I sat down with uh, I think it was Brett Klicka from Fitness Quest 10 I mean I know I know it was Brett Klicka he's one of my best friends now but Brett is who I did the interview with and that's uh, Todd Durkin who's, who's the guy that owns that gym and I got an internship there and I knew nothing I had no degree in you know I was studying business at the time so I was didn't have a degree in exercise science I had never trained anybody before and I just like showed up. I was hungry and I was just like, I want to learn as much as I can about fitness and training. And um, I, uh, I got a job there, an internship, and I worked. I had the schedule of, of – I had the best schedule. and It was great. I had a, a, a 5 a.m. session with a woman whose uh, heart rate monitor beeped the entire hour at 5 a.m. Oh, my God. At, you know, and so her heart rate goes and it beeps the whole time. Beep. Beep, beep, beep. just like the entire hour just kept beeping and then my next session was at 8 p.m so i would just chill out for the rest of the day so i had that that split shift of uh one session at 5 a.m and the other session at 8 p.m which was nice but that's you, you you pay your dues in the beginning right and in the middle i was there you know hanging out with brett and just you know watching everything he did and he taught me everything he knew uh about training and you know that's kind of you know, I was there for five years, um, learned everything I could. I actually met Vanessa at my wife, Vanessa, at Fitness Quest 10. Wow. So, uh, yeah. yeah, it was awesome that uh, 
you know, we, we got to meet there and we worked together for a long time. And, you know, we started dating a couple of years into the, what we were, when we were there. And um, it was at, at uh, Fitness Quest, about halfway through, I was training athletes and I became frustrated at my results. And I started looking for answers. And I found this old looking bald guy from Boston that had this really thick accent <laughs> and I started watching these videos and I was like, this guy does not look like a strength coach by any means at all. But man, do I love what he's saying. And I started following everything he did. I became a boiled disciple and I started, you know, reading every book he wrote, watching every DVD to the point where Vanessa and I, would watch Mike Boyle DVDs. I would go home and I, I would I would work at the at the gym at Fitness Quest, and I would come home and I would watch Mike Boyle DVDs for another three hours before I fell asleep. And poor Vanessa like thought I was having an affair with Boyle. She was like, "What is going on?" She was like, "This all you do is watch Boyle DVDs. Like, let's go out, let's go do something." I was like, "Nope, <laughs> got to take it to the next level." And uh, <laughs> I always and Mike comes, uh, coach always comes on and does stuff for my mastermind. And, uh, you know, we always, we always joke about that, but it, it was, it was it, it, so when I started learning from Mike, man, everything changed for me. Everything clicked from a training perspective. And it was, uh, I got the opportunity. I, I, I like this stuff so much. I sent him an email and I said, Hey, I'm going to be in the area. Cause I'm from New Jersey originally. I said, Hey, I'm going to be in the area. Um, would you mind if I stopped by and asked you some questions and interviewed you? Um, and he was like, yeah, sure. And I sat down uh, with him. He sat down with me for three hours and talked to me. Didn't know me from a hole in the wall. I was just some kid that was emailing him. And he sat down with me for three hours and answered. I had, I had, a, I had an old school tape recorder in, believe it or not. And I started you know, asking him all these questions. And I mean, he, that one meeting, and I still talk to him about that day today. Um, and I still thank him for it all the time. But that one meeting changed the game for me. It gave me the permission to go off and start my own gym. It gave me, you know, he gave me books to read that I'll look at that, if, you know, he told me to read the E-Myth. And if I didn't read that book, I probably would be in a different position as I am now. But that meeting changed the game for me. Um, and then about a year later, I ended up moving from California back to New Jersey, where I'm from, and, you know, started my own thing. I started, you know, out of my truck. I was a, I was a full year uh, working out of my truck, training kids on fields, training people in my mom's basement, going and renting space at local gyms. So for a full year, I was just like a man possessed trying to get a business off the ground and the business started. And then um, probably about a year after that of being an independent contractor and training, you know, kids and moms and everything I could get my hands on. Um, I opened up my first facility in 2008 called Gabriel Fitness. It's still open uh, today, 13, 14 years later, whatever it is. And uh, we've had some pretty good success, a good run uh, for a long time. And I've always, you know, as much as I've loved the training, I've always also loved the business side. Um, and I took a liking to that. And I took a lot of the things I learned from business, um, just really teaching myself and brought that into you know, my own business and we had good success. And I think people started, you know, taking uh, uh, notice of what we were doing and the success we were having and slowly started having gym owners reach out to me, asking me if I can help them with their business and marketing and sales. And, um, you know, that turned into a, a full fledged uh, business consulting company, which I run called uh, fitness business university. I have a mastermind, um, that has over 60 gym owners in it uh, right now. We have a, a monthly newsletter. There's a podcast. There's uh, courses. There's all kinds of the full-fledged business consulting business um, that's specifically for helping gym owners become more successful business owners. And so um, that's kind of where, you know, I sit today. I mean, my gym still runs. And still runs at a very high level. I really don't do much at the gym, but um, the majority of the time I spend is with uh, helping other gym owners 
uh, with the business side of things. Actually, just before recording this, I had my weekly call with all, all the gym owners, and we were talking about pricing and mindset and persuasion and influence and marketing and all this stuff that I get to do um, every day. But I think that the, the big thing that I, I guess gives me an advantage, if you will, Ant, is um, I'm still doing it. Like my gym still runs. So I go out and I walk out the door I'm in right now in my office and I can see people training. I can see physical therapy going on. I can see, you know, trainers, training trainers. I can just, I see it all. I'm around it all every day. And that just gives me a really unbelievable inside look at what helps make a gym successful in addition to um, helping 60 other people at the same time. So it's really been a great uh, it's, it's been a fun run um, to go from gym owner, but I feel like that's the other thing too, is I, and I, and I tell this story to, you know, really speak to your listeners in that I've walked every part of the path, right? I started as the intern. I became the trainer that grinded for 50, 60 hours a week. I became the independent contractor that's trying to scrap things together and make it work. I became the guy that started a gym went on my own and did everything for a little while. And, you know, now I sit in more of a owner role of you know, allowing a team to run a gym and I spend time, you know, uh, coaching others to, to do it. So I've walked uh, the, the path of every step in this industry. Uh, I still have a lot to learn. I'm still growing and learning every day. Um, but it's been a, it's been a really cool um, part that takes me to today where I, you know, have a lot of freedom and time I can spend with my three kids and take my son to jujitsu right after this call at three o'clock, um, you know, going to date night with Vanessa right after that. So it's like being, you know, helping and understanding and knowing business has enabled me to have, you know, a lot of freedom uh, in my life. And I feel like that that's what I'm trying to help with the industry out. I feel like there's a lot of guys that own gyms that yeah they're doing they're they're doing some stuff and they're making some money but but they're not free they don't have the freedom of time um that they want uh, a lot of them don't have the freedom of money um that they want and um that's really what i feel like you know god put me on this earth to do is to take a, a, a an industry where people you know typically aren't great at business they're good at training and they're good at you know the craft but Hey, you, you got to understand and know how to run a business as well. Otherwise, you know, you'll never enjoy the fruit of what a business provides, which is, which is time, which is freedom, which is financial freedom. And um, that, that's essentially what I'm out to do. I'm out to help as many people in the gym area, in the gym space as I can um, experience um, some of the benefits that I've had and some of the benefits that my clients have had. Yeah. So oh. that was – Mouthful there. Yeah. yeah. Well, okay. one of the things I think it's really important again, and you know, we've had this conversation off air many times, is the importance of still running the gym. Not saying that you you wouldn't be if you your gym if you shut down your gym, you would still be able to help people. But I think especially over the last eighteen months, this is a unique situation. If if you're working with a a coach who didn't have a gym. During this, then they weren't. They had no clue what uh, what gym owners were going through, and I don't care how long they've been in in it, and you know probably know who I'm talking about. But um, so, but I, what I also love about you is is that you you've really it, it hasn't been just hey this is what I've learned from you know Gab- at Gabriel's. No, you. We, you and I met at the Cosgroves mentorship. You were with Pat Rigsby, working with him for a little while. You were um, with Thomas Plummer. You did the Goldman Sachs. I mean, you've never, like, you've been obsessed also. Like, so a lot of people start out, you know, like normal, like we start out obsessed with training. But you've also, you know, run the gamut with coaches and really got a feel for how coaches, what other programs look like. Um, and you've been able to tailor that. And, and, you know, you also work with people outside of the fitness industry in terms of, you know, you've, are, are, you've been in programs. Like the Goldman Sachs was not fitness, had nothing to do with it. And I think that's really important as well. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I've always, you know, been a, been a learner. And uh, it, it, it's something I think that is 
you know, one of the things that uh, Tony Robbins says is, is, is progress e- equals happiness, right? And so it, as long as wherever you're at in business, um, you're, you're, you're focused on making progress. And I think that when you stop learning, that's when, you know, you should be, uh, you really start getting scared. So, you know, I appreciate that, Anna. We've had a, we've had a good run and uh, I've learned a lot from a lot of those people that you mentioned, Pat, uh, Tom Plummer, obviously the Cosgroves. Um, I mean, tr- I throw in Charlie Weingroff as well, and obviously Boyle. Um, there's there's definitely more in there that that I'm not mentioning, but um, yeah, those those people have been in integral in in, in, in in our success. Yeah, well, let's talk about um, you know helping gym owners now again, and and it, it is the new year, and it's never too late. Um, you know, you don't have to be, I, I know I've had a couple of gym owners that said to me one time, like, ah, I missed the January 1st deadline. It was like January 3rd, you know, uh, you know, it's not too late. And also these, these, uh, principles that you're going to talk about are good really anytime. So talk to us about, um, you know, effective ways to get new clients this year. Yeah. Um, I'm preparing for an upcoming um, a masterclass that I'm doing this weekend. And it's a, it's a virtual uh, marketing training. Um, we'll, we'll put the link in the, in the show notes, uh, to attend. It's a free seminar, uh, to attend virtually, but if you want to go directly to it, it's just Vince's masterclass.com. And I'm kind of unpacking all the things I'm thinking about differently, uh, for marketing in 2022, uh, so we'll talk about some New Year's type stuff to take advantage of. But I also want to really, you know, talk about what are the things that um, people should be doing and thinking about differently relative to what's still going on in the world, right? It's, it, I mean, we had our mastermind call today. And, I mean, so many people, are, and I always ask them the question, and I think this is a question for people to ask themselves, is I always ask the question to my uh, members, I was like, what's your biggest frustration right now? Right. Cause I want to know what's frustrating. I want to know what the challenges are. Cause that's what kind of guides me, um, to teach. And one of their biggest frustrations right now is their trainers getting COVID and their clients canceling assessments and potential clients freezing their membership. Like it's still like, we're not out of the woods, um, by any means right now. And I think that people still need to have their foot on the gas. It's almost like, and I always teach this, and it's inevitable that you're going to lose clients. It's like completely inevitable. Like a gym that has a hundred members, they should expect to lose three members a month if they're doing a good job. And the reality is, and if you do the math on that, if you, so three it doesn't sound like a lot, right? But over the course of a year, that's 36 people. Right now, all of a sudden, you start the next year. If you don't bring any new members, you start the next year at almost fifty percent less. That that that's like mind-boggling to really think about. Like, and a lot of people don't do the math. Right? They look and say, "All right, I'm starting the year with a hundred clients, and I want to go from hundred to one hundred fifty. Well, you don't need to add fifty members. You need to add a lot more than that, because loss is inevitable." And I think that's one of the things that people don't understand and don't realize is that you need to be as good at marketing to even just reload who you're going to lose. And that's at a bare minimum. If you want to grow, you've got to be better than that. So that's why, that's why I've tried to bring marketing to the forefront of gyms because loss is inevitable. You're not going to keep everyone forever. It's just going to happen. People are going to move away. People are going to, I mean, we've had tons of people move away in our community. Yeah. Like, I'm getting out of New Jersey. Yeah. East coast. Yeah, you did too. I know I did it. <laughs> you moved, right. Like you moved. Right. So if you were trading at a gym, that, that would be a lost client for somebody. Right. And so I, I think that, that people don't understand that. They don't understand that you've got to be good at marketing just to be able to reload who you lose, let alone, bring in more members to, to grow. So I think that that's a, that's like a really, really important uh, thing to understand. And that's why I'm so passionate about marketing. One, I just love marketing. Um, And I, and I also think that most gymers don't take a time to learn it. And 
a lot of times they don't take the time to learn it or they don't do it. They don't do it because they're not good at it. And why would you be good at something? And if I asked you to start juggling right now, like if you, you wouldn't be good at that if you've never done it before and it would suck and it would frustrate you. And you'd be like, I hate this. I don't want to do this anymore. But all of a sudden, if you started getting really practicing, getting good at juggling, you'd be like, want to do it more. Like, I love juggling. This is awesome. I'm getting better. I'm getting more confident. And I think that's how like gym owners look at marketing. They, they're not good at it. So they shy away from it as opposed to kind of leaning into learning the skill and being able um, to build their confidence over time. Um, but, but it just doesn't happen. Like people aren't just going to come out of the woodwork and come to your gym. Like you're going to have to put some uh, stuff out there uh, to be good. And I will say this, it's like, it's, it's the one skill that, you know, whatever you decide to do in your life that you can use what, you know, like it, your knowledge of training adults doesn't transfer to if you open up an ice cream store, right? But if you learn how to acquire new customers at your gym and you go open up an ice cream store, the same principles apply to get new customers at the ice cream store. So it's just an important, I I believe it's an important skill to learn. If you're going to own a business that you should understand marketing, you should, and, and really all it is, is understanding human behavior at the end of the day. Right. That's, that's really what it is. Dan, one of my mentors, Dan Kennedy, says yeah. marketing is nothing more than 50 percent math and 50 percent psychology. It's just understanding, you know, why people make the decisions they do, which does tend to take some time. And, you know, I try to I, I push myself on, you know, I'm like an old school business coach where I, I want people to, to learn. Right. There's the old adage of, you know, give a man a fish, you feed him for a day, teach a man to fish, you feed him for a lifetime. Right. And that's what I try to do with gym owners. So like when I, you know, give my gym owners and my mastermind, I give them samples of emails to send and stuff like that. But I tell them, I was like, hey, you know, take these, use these as an example, but learn how to do this yourself. Understand the concepts, understand people, understand why someone would respond to this email, understand why. Uh, this email gets a better response than than the than the one that you wrote before. I just so I, I just think it's you know an important skill um, for for business owners to learn because it's kind of like you almost got the keys to the vault, right? And if you understand how to get people to buy, if you understand how to get people to respond, you kind of are in control of your destiny. Versus you being good at training. Yeah, you being good at training only allows you to to keep sixty four people, right? Out of that hundred, yeah. right? If you, yeah. Right? It's like crazy, yeah? Isn't it? Isn't it crazy to think about that? Like yeah. If you start with a hundred members, and you you do a three percent, which is industry average, that's three people a month. That's yeah. that that's thirty six people a year. And if you, you only charge sixty four, and if you only charge three hundred bucks a month, that's that's ten thousand dollars a year. That you're losing, so it's not it's yeah. nothing to sneeze at. And a lot of people, like for example, East Coast, are certainly charging more than that. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. So, so that's why I'm passionate about marketing. That's why I'm doing the master class uh, this weekend. It's just Vince'sMasterclass.com. Um, but they should go through the link in the show notes uh, to, to get to that. So I'm going to be unpacking a lot more um, about it in a lot of ways. But I want to just give your listeners some quick tips today um, that they could probably take and start using. Um, yeah, cool. So you want to get into that now? Yeah, yeah. Um, just, yeah, I know you said you had five of them. Let's, let's get, let's get. Yeah, through. I got five. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll bless, I'll bless this quickly. But so, so the first one is um, text message to former members. Um, and uh, this is very, so there's a difference between strategy and tactics. I'm getting very tactical today, right? And I normally like to start with strategy. I normally like to say, all right, what's our plan? What's our strategy? Who's the target market? And I'm kind of skipping that stuff. I'm breaking my rules and skipping that stuff to hopefully that your listeners have some of this stuff down. Uh, if they don't, they should definitely come to the master class. Um, but I think that um, just giving some tactical stuff will, will be helpful. So, um, And this is not only stuff that I've taught to my members, but this is stuff I've used in my own gym. 
And so one of the things that we've had success with over the last several weeks is text messages to former members. And basically all we were doing is looking at who used to train with us and saying, okay, well, this person left and, you know, they left during COVID or they left a year ago or whatever. And they left on good terms. Like we didn't like have a screaming match with them when they were leaving and they're cool people. So we kind of want them to come back. And the, the text message we use that's been working like gangbusters is basically just this. It says something like, I'm paraphrasing here, but um, hey, Anthony, um, are you considering coming back to GFP this year? And it's kind of like, almost like you taking something that you know they're thinking about, right? You know that 99% of the population is thinking about doing something different for their health and fitness. Everyone's got some kind of thing like, ah, I want to lose my weight or I want to start doing this or I want to start doing that. Like everyone's probably thinking something along those lines. And so I'm kind of just entering the conversation already going on. So with, are you considering? Well, of course they're considering. I already know they're considering. So I'm kind of answering that. And then the, the second part is just coming back to GFP. And there's a little bit of um, uh, uh, some psychology there. Like when you ask coming back to GFP, there's all of a sudden this, well, I don't want to disappoint them, <laughs> right? I don't want to say like, oh, no, I don't want to come back. And the guy, if they don't want to come yeah. back, they don't answer you. No one's going to answer and say, sorry, no, I'm not coming back, right? Uh, well, they could, obviously. They're somewhat bold. But um, we've reactivated a lot of members this year, um, and I've done this on a, on a mastermind side too. It's funny that um, we had our mastermind call today, and I used the same strategy for some of the mastermind members that had left during COVID. And I sent them this text. Are you considering coming back to the mastermind this year? And I'm literally teaching the lesson and two of them in the group were like, man, you sent me that exact same text message. <laughs> and they're like laughing at it. And there was like a great, we had a great, we had a great laugh at it. Um, but it's like, you know, all of it, it applies. It's like, well, there's a text message that works in a consulting business and there's a text message that works in a gym. It's the same thing, it, and that's what I'm coming back to. It's understanding human behavior. Well, of course, those people were considering doing something to help their business grow because most, most business owners are growth-minded. They want to take it to the next level. This is my gear. This is it. I'm going after it, and, then, and, and, and they're thinking about it. So when I ask the question, are you considering coming back to the SPF Mastermind this year, their brain tells them yes, and – when they respond yes, then I get on the phone with them and I say, hey, well, let's get you to come back. And it worked. And it's like, it was, it was just very funny today. Uh, so, we, so we had a good laugh about that. But it's like they're already thinking about coming back. They're considering it. Now, it's the change of the new year. So, you know, people are considering doing fitness even more. Um, but you don't need to spend money on Facebook ads to do that, right? You just send them a text. You probably already got their phone number. You can send them an email if you want, but that's a list of people. You, it, it, people understand the li how valuable a list is. A list of phone numbers is like gold in the business. So that's number one, Ant. Love it. And I think, uh, you know, it's funny how Ant, that. Did you, did you fall asleep? Did you no, fall no, asleep no I, have a, I have a oh, mute right. button and I just, oh, I have right. to, I, 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 I press it softly now. I don't want people to hear the button. So, um, but, uh, you know, it's funny how that has come full circle, too, with, like, text messaging because it used to be, like, a taboo, like, like for a business, right? Like, no one would even think of that. Like, the, the, the cell phone was kind of uh, a place where, you know, you really didn't get that. And over the last couple of years, it's really, you know, I, I get a lot of messages. And I sign up for a lot of messages like, oh, yeah, send me those messages. Send me those deals. Send me that whatever. So I think uh, it, it's certainly, I mean, people at first glance might be like, ooh, I don't want to do that. But, uh, it, you know, I, I think it's more effective than an email. Yeah, absolutely. And, and again, I'm not, these specific texts we use weren't like, la like large blanket texts where we sent into a huge list. We actually just individually did it um, from from cell phones and, and Facebook Messenger and stuff like that. So um, it doesn't have to be these big, big, long broadcast texts. It can be very individualized, which is, you know, hey, you know, you get three people to come back at 300 bucks a month, $900 a month in recurring revenue after sending a few text messages.
That's pretty good. Uh, not bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, the next one, though, it and I know you went over this on one of the episodes, but local newspapers, and I think this is, some people are just going to roll their eyes and be like, what is this guy? Is this from 1989? You know, so, I mean, it, it's pretty crazy. So the, the quick story is I moved to a new house last year, and one of the first days we were there, we got our mail, and in the mail was this newspaper. I was like, oh, this is weird. I like, I never see the newspaper anymore. And it came in the mailbox, and it was like four pages long, five pages long or something. It was really small. And I'm like, this is interesting. And so I posted a picture of the newspaper in my private Facebook group uh, for our members. And I said, hey, any of you guys read this? And I got like 30 responses. They're like, yes, cover to cover. Like can good community news. Read it every week. Read, read it every month. Like, yes, cover to cover. Cover to cover. Read it all the time. And I'm just like, wow, this is unbelievable and so i was like i was at that time i was launching our new grit program which is our, our sports performance and we have gabriel fitness which is training for adults over 40 and then we recently rebranded our sports performance under a different name called grit athlete performance that's a whole nother story in and of itself that i'm not going to get into today and why i decided to change the name and rebrand but um so anyway i i said i'm going to launch this grit program with these newspaper ads and see how it goes and literally filled the program in like a few, uh, a few days just from these newspaper ads. It was mind boggling. I, we were, my, the guy that runs the program for me, Mike Mall, he was looking at me. He's like, how is this working? Like, how is this even possible that a newspaper ad is working? Now here's why it works. And two reasons. One our the reason why it works is our client's eyeballs are on that newspaper. So a lot of people think that like a certain media is dead, like direct mail is dead and newspapers are dead and all this stuff is dead, right? But it really doesn't matter about the media. It matters only where the eyeballs are, right? So here's, the, here's, the, here's like another example. Like you could like, let's say like take there's a restaurant in your town, right? And let's just say like no one goes to that restaurant anymore. Like everyone's like, everyone knows like no one goes there anymore. But you know that there's still a local group of groupies that go to that restaurant all the time, every day. And if those people are in your target market, then you should market in that restaurant, should market on the placement in that uh, placemat in that restaurant. And so that the point is, is not to, for me to tell everyone on your podcast to do newspapers. The lesson here is market where your target market is. So if your target market is on Facebook, you should be marketing on Facebook. If your target market on Instagram, you should be marketing on Instagram. Don't take what the the people are telling you of this works and this doesn't work. Bullshit. Like find it out for yourself. Like test it yourself. And that's what marketing really is. It's just a big test. You just got to throw stuff against the wall and see if it fits. Well, we threw this against the wall. And I'm I'm telling you um, the, the amount of return that we're getting from these and still working. Like literally today, Mullen comes up to me and is like, dude, the January ad's killing it. And like these papers like release on a certain day and, you know, like gobs and gobs of leads, like ready, people ready to buy from a newspaper ad. And so that's the first part, right? Is just, you know, if their eyeballs are there, there. but the second part is actually how you're doing it. So there are plenty of people that market in the newspaper that aren't getting any results at all. Plenty of them. Um, and the reason why is that they're just using bad marketing mechanics. And this is stuff I'll go over in, you know, the masterclass. But they don't understand how to write headlines. They don't understand calls to action. They don't understand, you know, benefits versus uh, features and benefits. Like it's just they're just they're rookies and they're just putting the logo and they're you know putting the phone number and the website and they're just hoping people come and it's just it just doesn't work. So part of it yeah. is, is how you're is how you're actually um, doing it. And you know, obviously, we've been studying marketing for a long time, so we understand what is going to get people to respond. And it has worked dramatically. So my, my advice is just to look at, are there any local publications that are in your area that are potentially maybe old school, untapped things that you got a lot of bad marketing. So the, one, the other reason why it works is there's a lot of bad marketing going on. So it's almost like I'm in the paper by myself because no one's even looking at the other ads because the ads are so bad, they just gloss over them. It, it, that, that's what it's like. It's yeah. like me being in the newspaper by myself. Yeah, yeah. Also, I love that uh, idea about be where your client is, where your client's eyes are, because I think it was Dan Kennedy that said, what, like the right message to the right people at the right time, 
right? It's, yep. They all have yep. to hit, right? And so it's not like you're advertising in the New York Post. You're advertising in the, you know, in, in the Berkeley Heights, you know, uh, yeah. whatever, B. Uh, <laughs> so uh, good stuff. Um, yeah, hyper, hyper local. Yeah, it's awesome. Uh, all right, well, Joint Ventures is next. And uh, I know you got a little... You were talking about Joe Hashi there. I wanted you to. I, I was. I it kind of sparked my. What is this? What is this about joint ventures? So, so Joe Hashi is the head business coach of my consulting company. He's like one of the smartest, most sophisticated gym owners I've ever been around. He's he's uh, and just a tremendous human being, um, and very well known in the industry. But uh, honored to have him work for us. But we call him the uh, the Yoda of je- uh, of joint ventures. Um, because he did a presentation at one of our mastermind meetings about how to create strategic alliances, which is partnerships with other businesses to help get new clients. And he did like a three hour talk that like, we still, um, refer back to that session that he did today. And it was three years ago, but he unpacked all these different ways and strategies that, you could get new clients by creating alliances with things like salons and hospitals and doctor's offices and all these different things. And it's, if you think about it, it's like the, I feel like a lot of um, gym owners, they, tr- they look at what's going on online. Right. And, and they look at like all of the things that are going on in the internet marketing world. And they just, they want to play in that world. They want to play in that world where, you know, they're setting up funnels and they're running webinars and they're running ads and they're like, they're, they're, they're doing all this stuff and they, they're treating their local brick and mortar business like a, like an internet company. And they're not, you're not an internet company. And now I'm not saying like I do, I run ads on Facebook. We have landing pages. We have a good presence on the web and stuff like that. But we also do a ton of stuff local. We go to the hokey town fairs. We advertise in newspapers. We reach out to other local businesses and create partnerships with because we are a local business. And I feel like a lot of people have been misled to uh, down this path of, hey, all you need to do is you know put $3,000 a month on Facebook and that's all the marketing you need to do. And that's like terrible advice. And I, and I really think that, that people need to understand that they are a local business. And that the more they can roll up their sleeves and get into their community, the better they're going to do. Now, obviously, this was put on hold during COVID, right? It was very much, very harder, much harder to do this stuff. But um, we we have tons of clients in our mastermind that are getting a large portion of their new memberships from joint ventures. And um, I, I, so I so I look at you know for gym owners. If I were you, what I would do is something called the joint venture drive by. And just drive, get in your car and just drive around your community and look at all the businesses. Go look and look at the, you know, the strip malls and look at what kind of businesses. And it's like, and ask the question is, does that business have my client? Does that business have my client? Meaning, do, do the people that go to that place also think about coming to mine? And if they do, then there's a lot of things that can be done to create partnerships and alliances because it's a win-win situation. It's a win for the gym. It's a win for the other business. Uh, and it doesn't necessarily have to be um, like in the health and fitness field, right? It's not, not to say that like, oh, if it's not a health and fitness, that it can't be a joint venture. I mean, you know, we've had, you know, lots of joint ventures um, that are outside of, of the fitness industry. So um, it, it's definitely something that you should look at um, to do. Plus it gives you a chance to look at what other people are doing to market their own business. And Jay Abraham, who's another business, um, business guy that he talks about, like sometimes you have to go outside of your industry to learn what you need to do inside your own industry. And so it just gives you that, that path. But I think ignoring joint ventures is a really big mistake. And, uh, there's, there's a lot of people leaving a lot of money on the table by not, uh, exploring those things. Absolutely, good stuff. And I know, obviously, in the in the webinar, you're going to go over a lot in a lot more detail about how people can do that and just give them some ideas. But uh, let's go to the sweepstakes and or the six week challenge piggyback. 
Yeah, this is huge. Um, the most successful thing I ever did for marketing was something called the sweepstakes. And this is where um, you give away uh, something. Uh, when we first did it, we gave away six weeks of training. Uh, we now give away a year. Um, but it's essentially you put something out, um, some kind of a really good offer um, to your community, and you have people apply to win. And what, what happens is people get really excited to win and so they fill out this application, and it's a pretty lengthy application. I mean, we ask people like a lot of questions, and we really want to know if they're serious about it. And what we do is we pick um, a few winners, and we take the winners, and we create like a documentary out of the winners. And we did this um, with a woman uh, when we first started named Kathy Balsamo, who ended up losing 82 pounds and became this YouTube sensation and, uh, and this local celebrity to the point where she did seminars with me, she wrote a book with me, and she was just a normal person that just lost a bunch of weight, but had a really big mouth and was basically the, you know, voice of a 50 something year old woman that never wanted to step foot in a gym in her entire life. And finally she lost all this weight and all these other ladies are just like, oh, if Kathy can do it, I can do it too. And she became this unbelievable mouthpiece for us. And it, it, she did a job that we could never do ourselves. And it came from just running this documentary because we were putting her, st we were putting her story out there. We were putting her story on Facebook and Instagram and all these different things. And people were drawn into what she was saying and what she was doing and the success she was having. Um, but at the same time, we built a big list of people that applied for the sweepstakes. So we only picked four winners, but we had about three or 400 other people that didn't win that we reached out to and said, hey, I'm sorry you didn't win, but would you like to come in and try a trial with us? And a lot of those people came in. A lot of those people signed up. And it was one of the most successful things we've ever done as a company. Now, that's something I have a whole product that just teaches that program. Um, I will go over it slightly in the masterclass this weekend. Um, but it's it's a game it's a complete game changer and we've actually packaged the whole thing together. So the mastermind when you get into the mastermind, literally we just give you everything on how to run it. We give you the ads, we give you the landing page, we give you everything, um, and people can just go and run it. It's 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 a complete game changer to a business. Um, but um, and what you do is like a lot of times if you do that right before some type of a challenge, like a lot of gyms run six week challenges. If you do sweepstakes right before a six week challenge you're going to get a lot of people that did the sweepstakes to come in for your challenge um, just because you just flooded lead. So there's, there's a whole gamut of stuff to do there. I can't, I don't have, I mean, I could speak about it for another three hours, but um, I think the, the big to understand is um, giving something away for free and having people apply uh, to win is a surefire way to build a big list of people interested in what you're doing. And um, we'll also get a ton of good stories out in your community and get people fired up and motivated by your channel. Yeah, I, I love the I love that quote. She did a job we could never do ourselves. I think it's a huge lesson is that, uh, you know, me, I, for one, uh, when I hear about a business, I always try to find somebody who's gone there or somebody that I know. Or I'm, I'm always I'm all about like, hey, Vince. Where can I get my haircut? Vince, where can I, what's the best gym around here? Vince, what's this? What's that? You know, uh, if I move to Berkeley Heights, I'm going to ask you about every single little business. So uh, it's a huge point to remember when, uh, when you can have a mouthpiece like, uh, like Kathy. Um, and, you know, look, she's a paisan. She knows, she knows the deal. <laughs> oh, she's the uh, best. So, um, I know we could talk for more three hours. You know that's why we call you uh, overtime, Vince. We don't call you that for nothing. Um, but we got <laughs> we, we got one more. Uh, emailing your list yeah, more. I'll make this. I'll make this quick. So um, one of my plans this year is to start jujitsu. And before I do jujitsu, I wanted to make sure my body's in alignment. And you know, so I wanted to see a chiropractor, right? And I started thinking about going to a chiropractor and, but I didn't, I didn't make, pull the trigger. And so I'm like going through my day and all of a sudden I get an email and the email is from a chiropractor that I had known. And the, the email was basically just a newsletter type email, but 
it reminded me that I need to go see a chiropractor. And then I called the chiropractor and I scheduled and now I have an appointment on Friday. And it's just like, if he doesn't send that email, I probably don't go. And so I think that people need to look at their list of emails. And I talked about a list of phone numbers before, but your list of emails, as, as your list of emails is, is currency. It's money. And that's sitting there. And if you don't use it, you're losing out on opportunities to get new clients. And so the biggest advice I have for email is just use it. Use it consistently. If you're emailing once a week, email twice a week. If you're emailing three days a week, email four days a week. If you start increasing um, the amount of times, you're increasing the probability that that email will be um, – that, 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 that problem that people had will be at the top of that person's to-do list that day. Like just like me getting chiropractic was on the top of my to-do list, but I needed that email to push me over the edge. And – so I, I think that people got to look at that. And, and, and honestly, like, I feel like some people don't even have emails in a list. So you got to put your emails in a list so you can send an email out all at once. And if you want to, if you're worried about what to say and you don't know what to say, here, there's three things you want to do with your email list. You want to educate, entertain, and inspire. Educate, entertain, and inspire. You want to make them smarter. You want to make them laugh. You want to make them cry. And, and that's what your emails should do. So don't overthink it. And then, and then uh, and lastly, and most importantly, you're going to give them a chance to come see you. So make them laugh, make them cry, make them smarter. Um, but then by all means, give them a chance to, to come in and say, hey, would you like to come in for a free consultation? You know, we have a free jump start or whatever. But always put that out there. Uh, I think people send too many emails without some kind of an offer. Um, and it, it drastically reduces um, the effectiveness of it. So um, I, I just have an email list and, and start doing it. I know that's pretty basic. I know some people might be like, all right, yeah, I'm already doing that better. Well, if you're already doing it, then, you know, um, okay, is there a way that you can do it better? Can you get better at copywriting? Can you get um, better at, at, you know, calls to action? Do you need to take those emails and do you need to write the emails, but also then post those emails on your website into a blog and social and stuff. So there's lots of ways to skin this. Um, but I, I think the fifth one is just um, being able to use that list of people to consistently put the message out there and know that when people are ready to buy, just like I was, um, they, they, they will come in. Absolutely. Well, we just scratched the surface on all five of these. The text messages oh, to former probably. clients, local newspapers, joint ventures, the sweepstakes, six-week challenge, piggyback, and email you this morning. You're going to do... A webinar. What do you call on the webinar, by the way? Um, it's uh, how to get the webinar. The title, the exact title of the webinar is how to get a surge of new clients, charge the bri- prices you deserve, and give yourself a ten thousand dollar a month raise. Very cool. In twenty twenty two. Nice. And we're gonna we're gonna have a special link at Continue Fit for, at TrainCoachPodcast dot com, um, and I'll post it in my IG uh, profile as well. So uh, our listeners can, can, you know, click that link and get involved in the webinar. So uh, Vince, um, thanks for coming on and not only talking about these five things, but it's always good to hear the story and where these things are coming from to know that we're getting this information from, uh, from the right source. And, and I, like I said, I call him Vin, Overtime Vince, but uh, it's, it's obviously because he cares. He wants to give as much information as possible. So, Vince, we appreciate you coming on, brother. Well, well most importantly, I just like busting your chops. So that's, that's why. <laughs>